Hey everybody, let's talk about what you get when we're dealing with element families. So what is an element family? Um, you may have noticed in the notes there's things like alkali metals and alkaline earth metals and transition metals and whatnot. But what do we mean by that? Well, let's take a look at some of the things that were covered in the notes on this subject. So to look at the notes, we have to understand that the periodic table is divided into periods which are horizontal as in that's like side to side groupings and then it's also divided into families arranged in columns and that's kind of what we're looking at for a lot of these things so on the periodic table there are groups of elements that are part of the same family so to show you here in another view that is an example right here periodic table is divided into families. Now, why do they are divided in these families? Like, why are these all alkali metals? And the answer is because families share similar chemical properties. So alkali metals are extremely reactive. Out of all the metals out there, these are the ones that are most likely to explode immediately on contact with water because they are so reactive. These, the alkaline earth metals, they have in common the chemistry traits of being reactive like you'll never find these pure in nature but they're not as reactive they're not as likely to explode on contact and instead, instead they're more likely to just react with stuff but just more slowly less vigorously so because these are so reactive you'll never find these elements pure in nature ever you find them bound to other things because the pure element is unstable it's extremely reactive Notice, by the way, hydrogen is not part of the alkali metals because it's not a metal, it's a gas, at least at regular Earth temperatures and pressures. Um, and there are some planets that under enough pressure, it actually can turn into a metal, but that's not what we normally find. So it normally doesn't behave as one, so it's not included in the alkali metals. Now, having mentioned that, transition metals are metals with low reactivity, not unreactive. They still react. After all, a shiny copper penny turns dark because it is reacting with the oxygen in the air over time. Same thing for an iron fence that rusts. That is a reaction. It's just slow. It's not going to explode on contact with water the way potassium would. It's not going to burn or bubble or react with water the way that like calcium would. It's going, or calcium metal, um, it's going to just rust very slowly over a long period of time. The same is true for some of these some react much more slowly than others like for example chrome stays shinier much longer than iron um, but nonetheless they are somewhat reactive just less now these are all metals remember that there is a red staircase separating the metals from the non-metals so uh, anyway these are very, these are the transition metals these metals are similar to the transition metals um, these are nonmetals all on this side of the periodic table. Now, nonmetals come in different varieties. Some nonmetals, particularly this group, are known for being reactive. Now, um, this group is known as the halogens. These are highly reactive, and that is why eating pure halogen is really, really bad for you, or breathing pure halogen for those that are gases. So, toxic, toxic, toxic 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 uh, that's actually extremely radioactive too so this is like even more toxic for all kinds of other reasons but anyway so they are toxic because they're highly reactive which is why these are also never found pure in nature these however are always found pure in nature because these are the noble gases and just like in the olden days nobles wouldn't mix with the common peasants these won't react with stuff at least that's the way they generally are now yes scientists have found ways to force these some of these heavier ones to react with stuff in the lab but essentially as far as we're concerned these don't react with stuff they are non-reactive so these you will find pure in nature unlike these which are not pure in nature and these groups the alkaline metals here and the alkaline earth metals are not pure in nature there are however some transition metals that can also be found pure in nature called the noble metals these are things like gold silver, platinum, and there are some others. Um, so they're not unreactive, it's just they're less reactive, which is why you're like more likely to find a 300-year-old Spanish shiny gold coin from a shipwreck. 
because uh, it will not have reacted all those years. That doesn't mean it's unreactive. With the right stuff, all of these will go through chemical reactions, unlike these, which under natural conditions will not react with anything at all. So these will react with stuff. Silver gets tarnished. Gold can tarnish, and so can platinum under the right conditions. It's just that these are stable enough that they actually can be found in nature, so they're called the noble metals. However, the noble metals is not a chemical grouping in and of itself. They're just part of the transition metals. So uh, let's see. Just to switch over to this. Okay, so here's another view of the same thing. Alkaline metals, alkaline earth, transition metals, halogens, noble gases. That gives you an idea where they are. There's one other thing to mention. There is something called the metalloids. Now, I didn't mention the metalloids as a, as a particular group. And the reason why is because they're not really a group, but it is something worth talking about. Metalloids are weird elements that are not quite metal, not quite non-metal. So they tend to be shiny like metals, partially conductive to electricity, but not flexible like metals. That's a very common thing to see. Um, so these are metalloids, like I said. Now that said, oftentimes these do behave, these are separated by this little line between metals and nonmetals because the metalloids on the metal side are more like metals than they are like nonmetals. And the ones on the nonmetal side are more, are more like nonmetals than they are like metals. So the, calling the metalloids is a recognition that they're not like either one, but we do draw this line of metal versus nonmetal to recognize the fact that some are more like metals than others, like these, and some are more like non-metals than others, like these ones over here. All right, and then uh, let's see, anything else to mention about these? Here's some, so I'll just end with some pictures. Let's see, copper is another one of the elements that's an, it, possible to find pure in nature. But when I say explode in water, there's a picture of potassium exploding in water. Not all these will explode on contact with water, but they they do react quite significant quite seriously and violently and vigorously so they that's why they all fall into the same category alkaline earth metals will react with water they just have to be heated first so they're not as reactive these are even less reactive still and then just to kind of show there's a cool little animation that we have of um, non-metals that are highly reactive so this is one of the halogens this is chlorine gas which is yellow in color it was used to kill soldiers in world war one mm -hmm. It's turning that red rose yellow because it's destroying the cells. And when it's pulled out, you can see that it has lost its color and taken on the yellow color because of the destruction of the cells as a result of the gas, which is what killed soldiers in World War I. Those unfortunate enough to be exposed suffered severe lung damage. And then uh, the last little thing, uh, noble gases, they're all clear, they're all colorless. The heavier ones are radioactive, but um, like I said, they are non, they will not chemically react with stuff. And, uh, the last little thing to mention, the noble gas, there's just another picture of the noble metals, just to give you the idea. This is why you find like gold flakes in a stream, but it's just to give an idea of a couple examples of what they look like. All right. That's a quick overview of the groups of the periodic table.